Jimmy. We understand you're getting erections in the classroom. <laughs> that is awkward. Golden stools, spontaneous um, situations, and many other possibly offensive health concerns. Today, we are back at it reacting to the medical scenes and out there injuries from South Park 11. What could possibly go wrong? Let's dive right in. Hello, doctor. Looks like I need an abortion. An abortion? Yeah, I've got one growing inside me. Now, you're going to scramble its brains or just vacuum it out? Whoa. Okay, so first, I'm not sure or know of any procedure where a man going to a female currently can then get a female organ and have it function. I don't think we're there in the science. I haven't heard of one where there was a uterus that was transplanted. If you want, you can just scramble it and I'll queef it out myself. Oh my gosh, the most inappropriate term. So that word ends up meaning just air coming out. And that typically can happen post-coital or after sexual encounters because of the air movements. You're physically unable to have an abortion because you can't get pregnant. But I missed my period. You can't have periods either. You had a sex change, Mr. Garrison, but you don't have ovaries or a womb. You don't produce eggs. Could you have a baby without ovaries? Potentially, if it is made outside of the body and then put back into the uterus and implanted directly in there. But there's also hormonal factors that need to play a part of this as well to allow things to grow appropriately, make a placenta, and have support of the body. You mean... I'll never know what it feels like to have a baby growing inside me and then scramble its brains and vacuum it out. No. That's right. But I paid $5,000 to be a woman. Hey, asshole! What? So you definitely cannot just walk into a procedure room, an OBGYN's office, especially even if you're not masked up. Mask up scrubbed in and just in normal clothes. I've already used your testicles to fashion new knees for a little boy who wanted to be tall and black. Wow! You can't use these different organs and just transplant them in anywhere you want. It doesn't happen that way. What is he doing? Is he eating gold? Oh my gosh. If you are privy to having like a little bit of gold flake in a drink or a cupcake, that's inert. It's so small, it's not going to cause any issues and pass right through your system. Versus ingesting this significant amount of a metal, bad idea. Please don't do this. It's been three days since four unidentified children were trapped in a cave-in. Three days without food, and time is certainly running out. Hope. <laughs> 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 So I wonder if he's like super heavy now because of all the metal. Depending on how much he ingested, you have a ton of feet of intestines that could basically store this stuff. You're gonna cause issues and you're not just gonna just be pooping out coins left and right. It actually probably is gonna cause an obstruction. Cartman, seriously, you need to see a doctor. No, I just need to get to a toilet. See you guys. I have it. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> Would it pass through your system that fast? Unlikely. It would be covered in poop, probably be bleeding. You can even have a bowel perforation to where you need an operation. Otherwise, the intestines are just going to leak all the poop inside your abdominal cavity, and then you become septic and you potentially die. Hey, Jimmy, how was school? Fine, man. Jimmy, we understand you're getting erections in the classroom. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, that is awkward. Erections happen multiple times a day. The worst is when you actually then have to get up. I just think about baseball. The fact that the parents know that this kid's having multiple erections at school means that somebody's been notified and they notice. Now, Jimmy, it's nothing to be ashamed of, but we know it's something you might have a hard time talking about. Get it? A hard time. <laughs> I love really bad puns. Oh my gosh. So we took your counselor's advice and called Dr. Powell to help us all talk about this. D Dr. Powell? Hey, Jimmy, I'm Dr. Powell. That's because I'm a doctor, but I'm also your pal. Are we cool? Uh, sure. A lot of times parents call me in because I can relate to younger kids. I'm, I'm down. I'm dope. You dig? Oh my gosh. I could totally relate that I've done this cheesy type of talk to patients, but I've done it in a joking manner. Sure. <laughs> Usually I get a laugh and that changes the dynamic of the room and makes people relax. If I definitely make jokes about myself. Jimmy, there's nothing weird about random erections. Almost every boy goes through a phase where his penis becomes hard for no particular reason. It's just part of growing yep. up. Growing up? Growing out is more like it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> 
So this Dr. Pal is actually saying some correct information that it just happens, especially as we're going through puberty, as our bodies are changing. So that is good and it's good to understand. It's just always awkward to have the conversation about it, right? Come on, honey. Jimmy, as you get older, your body goes through a lot of changes. Certain hormones start to release as your whole reproductive system begins to awaken. And so if you like, we can take off our shirts and kiss. Wow, totally inappropriate. In a hospital, if I need to examine anybody, any age, I'm with a nurse that's in the room, a family members are in the room, and we only expose areas that need to be examined that are medically necessary. If this ever happens to anybody out there, please tell your parents, tell the police, tell somebody who can help you. It matches your <laughs> Wow, so I'm assuming he made fun of or said something about the headgear. I wore headgear when I was a young kid. Not cool to make fun of somebody who's just trying to fix their jaw the way their teeth are. <laughs> Is happening. Stan is getting thrown around so he can get abrasions, bruises, ecchymosis, hematomas. <laughs> the TV that appears to electrocute him, but if it's not plugged in, there's no electricity. If it's connected, the biggest things we worry about are cardiac arrhythmias, messing with your heart because of the electricity, and then obviously superficial burns and muscle and nerve destruction. <laughs> you ready to go, Stan? Go where? <laughs> glass, any major lacerations, they need to be washed out and cleaned at home and then even in the emergency department and then potentially sewn up. To the genetical engineering ranch. We got Cartman's pig so we can splice its genes with my elephant. Genetically splicing DNA of a pig into another animal. Pig and an elephant DNA. There are many rules, regulations, and laws relating to genetic manipulation of even animals. What the heck? Okay, wait a minute. So we're outside sun tanning, smoking, and having some sort of light. Definitely looks like the x-rays that are at the dentist. Dad, mom says to stop trying to give yourself cancer. Ah, there you go. Cancer in itself is the abnormal replication of a cell that just gone rogue and it's going crazy. And it happens because of higher chances of these cells occurring during cell turnover. Just gonna get a little bit of cancer, Stan. Tell mom it's okay. Sun is actually good for you. It actually helps with the vitamin D production. Obviously getting too much sun is not good for you. It can cause cell damage with anything. Too much of a good thing is not good for you. Too much of anything is bad for you, you blithering twat. South Park does it again. Always entertaining, always pushing the limit and definitely offensive at times. So this was really entertaining. I'm glad I was able to flip some of this around and talk about what happens in the real world. And if you enjoyed this, definitely check out this playlist right here. Binge watch everything. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching, and stay healthy, my friends.